What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Now I was thinking, this is my day off, what kind of video do I want to upload? I try to upload on my day off. And there's some PS2 games that I really want. As a matter of fact, this is what made me want to do this video. This game right here. Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast. I've seen that game, I wanted to play it. I do own it on the PSP, so I know how good this game is, but it's really expensive. It's expensive, I think it's on the, the original Xbox as well. I found that the case, and it's the original case, it's got the Ferrari logo on there, but I found the case and the disc for $40, which I thought was a lot, and, you know, upon further research, that's kind of a decent deal, so I got that, and that got me thinking, you know, what are the prices of some of these PS2 games like, because I, I have a, a good bit of PS2 games, but there's still quite a few that I'm looking for, um, these are just eight games, so this is uh, eight PS2 games that have really jumped in value, um, some of these games, or a lot of these games are, are known for being expensive games, but expensive two years ago and expensive now are two totally different things. So, all right, we'll start off with, I got these in some kind of an order now. We'll start off with this first game here. It's a working designs game. So number eight, we have Grow Lancer Generations. That copy is complete. This is a working designs release on the PS2 that came in a big box. I do believe there was a watch and other items that you would get as well. Working Designs was known for that, especially uh, in the PS1. Well, the PS1 and the PS2 era, certain games came with things, certain games didn't. Uh, an example of this would be uh, the releases of Lunar 1 and 2 on the PS1 that came with a lot of goodies, as you want to call them. But just the standard edition, just this, just the discs. There's two discs in the manual. Uh, if you want to buy that, or if you wanted to buy that a couple years ago, I, that was one of the cheaper RPGs on the system. Uh, at, at times it was under 20 and then I want to say between 20 and 30 for the longest time but now in 2021 if you want a copy of Grow Lancer Generations on the PlayStation 2 an NTSC you know a North American copy it's going to cost you around $70 so I know that doesn't seem like a lot you know considering where retro gaming is going right now 70 is it's still kind of tame and that's that's pretty sad to say but yeah number eight we got Grow Lancer Generations and the first one, I guess this is the second quarter of 2021 going for $70. Okay, next game, number seven, Shadow Hearts Covenant. And uh, I actually have what I paid right there, $36.99. And that wasn't too terribly long ago. So this is a game I haven't played yet. I am in the middle of playing the first Shadow Hearts game um, right now. I did play this for a few minutes, and it seemed like it could, could have been a different game, but it was like a World War II kind of themed uh, game going on there. But... Maybe that was another RPG I was playing, but anyway, so this is, a, obviously I paid $36.99. This was maybe a year ago or so. Um, I looked up the price on this, so, and it, this one's kind of all over the place. So this one, if you want Shadow Hearts Covenant, on the low end, $90. But I did see copies complete selling on eBay. Sold, I only looked at sold listings now, but $150. So anywhere between... 90 if you got it at an auction on a good deal all the way up to 150 dollars so shadow hearts covenant i know that's a that's a pretty broad range right there but you can get it anywhere between let's say 100 and 150 dollars that's that's a lot i didn't think i'd see that rpg get up that high this next one this is one of the second games i looked up so this will be number six on this list this is uh it's a good game too i usually don't buy games like this um but anyway Klonoa 2, Lunate's Veil. Awesome platformer. I love the way you grab your enemies and you can use them as a double jump. Uh, the mechanics on this game are sick. Uh, they've always been sick in the Klonoa games. The PS1 uh, classic. The port on the Wii is good. This is good. There's a DS game. Or not DS. GBA game that I have. There's like two of them, I think. I have the first one. I found it not that long ago. It's actually... Uh, it's Translates well into 2D too, old Klonoa, but if you want this copy, you want the PlayStation 2 copy, and here's what I paid. Wasn't that long ago either, $34.99, and this was a semi-common game. This game store had two copies when I bought that. Uh, the game store, the flea market that I go to, I, they had a copy at the time. They have a Japanese copy. If you have a Japanese PS2 right now for like 20 if anybody really needs that, and hell, I'd buy a Japanese copy. You can play this game in Japanese, but if you want Klonoa 2... North American version on the PS2 in 2021, it's going to cost you anywhere from $125 to $175 for old Klonoa 2. Old Klonoa. Old Klonoa's fancy, fancy, fancy price range on that one. That's, 
that's sad, man. It's a really good game, and I, I thought it sold decently well. I knew it was going to be an expensive game. You know, it was one of those, like, $40 games. That was kind of expensive for a PS2 game, but, God, expensive then and expensive now are just two totally different things. Okay, next up. Okay, this is a game that was always known for being an expensive game, but a $50 expensive game. So next up on the list, we have old Sakoden 5. This is a good RPG. It starts off, the story starts off really slow. Um, you're a prince, and uh, you're the queen's son. And in this, this queendom, the queen is like the top dog. The king isn't the top dog, and the queen is letting this runestone kind of manipulate her mind. And that's kind of how the story starts off there. But it's a pretty excellent RPG, and one of my favorite Sakoden games of the ones I've played. I've played a, the first two on the PS1 and a couple of them on the PS2, but I really like this one. And this was a $50 game for the longest time. And I think it deserved its commanding price of $50. It's a, it's a pretty good RPG. But in 2021, if you want a copy of Sakoden 5, it's going to cost you anywhere from $150 to $200. Complete in its box. I'm sure if you want a disc-only copy on any of these games, you can probably shave a few dollars off of that price. But $150 to $200 on Sakoden 5. God, it's expensive. I would have never paid that. I'll just buy, I'll get a mod bo modded PS2, pay 200 for it, and burn my own games if I'm gonna, before I pay prices like that. All right, so, last four, okay. Next up, and I have other PS2 games. These are just like, you know, we all have those games that like we put on our shelf that we can look at from time to time. These are just the ones that were sitting on my shelf that I could look at. Okay, next up on the list, we have Wild Arms Alter Code F. This was another game that was in the 50 to $60 price range for the longest time for years. Uh, this is a remake of the, the first Sakoden game. Sakoden game. Wild Arms game. Sorry, guys. Having uh, just finished a half a, cuff, half, blah, 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 half a cup of my morning coffee. Okay. Wild Arms Alter Code F. Okay. It was a $50 to $60 game for the longest time. But in 2021, if you want a complete copy, and there is a DVD, there's an anime DVD inside there as well. That copy is complete. Um I think when I when I bought this, actually, I think I paid the, the higher end of what it was worth at the time. I think I may have paid seventy or seventy five dollars uh, for this game, and uh, I think that was quite a lot. And this was a couple of years ago. Um, I really wanted to play this this remake of the Sakoden game, which is it's okay, you know, it's okay. But in twenty twenty one, if you want a copy, it's going to cost you anywhere between one hundred and sixty to one hundred and eighty dollars. Man. That Modbo mod is starting to sound better and better by the minute, but yeah, Wild Arms Alter Code F. God, $160 to $180. Okay, next game. This is another game that kind of inspired this video. This is the game that I'm in the middle of playing right now uh, because of work and, and, and other things in my life. It's harder to play these RPGs, these really long 20, 30, 40, 100 hour games, right? But here we go. Number, last three. Okay, Shadow Hearts. It's a good game what I've played so far. I haven't finished this game, uh, but I do. What I can tell you about Shadow Hearts is, and this is this is good about this game, at least to me, it's very linear. Um, there's puzzles in between, but it's very. It's got a visual novel style to it, although there is puzzles in between. I really like it because you know if you can only play for an hour here, two hours there, you can still piece the story together and continue to move forward in the game. Whereas if you take a different RPG. It's a little bit more complex. Um, if you live a lifestyle where you can't dedicate chunks of your time to finish that RPG, you're going to get stuck. You're going to be like, where the hell am I at? You know, I, I'm in this dungeon. I don't know what to get. I don't know what key to get. I don't seem to have that problem here with Shadow Hearts. And I think that's a very, very big strength of this game. It's a good RPG. I love the ring system. Um, it, it's got that It's got that timing-based kind of mechanic in a sense that... Um, a little bit different then, but it kind of similar to the first Valkyrie profile game and, and kind of a, a weird way. Um, but okay, Shadow Hearts. If you want a copy of Shadow Hearts in 2021, this is the original Shadow Hearts. There's three. I have the first two and one of them was on this list. This is the second one on this list. 190 bucks. 190 bucks. Now this copy here, I, I just, I feel the need to point this out. Okay. Who wouldn't if they had it, but I was at a convention and uh, I saw this. This promotional copy, not for resale now. I'll tell the story behind this game. I told this story several times during live streams. But uh, I was with Linda 
uh, AKA the gamer girl. I was with a couple other YouTubers, but specifically I remember Linda Scarlet Sprites as well. Um, that game collector, but uh, Linda is um, a dear friend on YouTube. I'm not friends with many females. You know, I have a, a woman I've been with for several years and, um, and I just don't hang with, uh, with, with many women, but Linda's definitely somebody I met that, uh, you know, any kind of friendships that develop from, uh, from that are, are definitely good and definitely benefit my life. So I meet people like that and they kind of get in your circle and she's definitely somebody that, uh, kind of got in my circle. We met, anyway, we met up at a convention, we're walking around and I had some cash on me. I'm buying games and, um, we were at this, all right. So this guy jumps out and he's like, I have, um, uh, these select games inside this tent here. If you guys want to check them out, I just, I remember that happening and we walked in this tent and this dude had like all these good games. Right. And I just saw that he had three copies of shadow hearts and I'm like, Oh, how much is shadow hearts? And he was like 50. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was a $50 game at the time. Right. I wanted to get shadow hearts at the time. It was 50. It was hard to find. I couldn't find a copy anywhere. It was the first time I'd ever even seen a copy at too many games convention a few years ago. Anyway, so the dude had these three copies and he laid them all out. He was like, which one do you want? And I'm like, I want that one. I could, I could, you know, it's glaring at me like a, like a stop sign. Right. I'm like, I want that one. He's like, yeah, I don't care if it, you know, he's busy. There's like all these people in there. He's trying to keep track of them all. So I thought that was a really cool, uh, buy. Now at the time, of course, I'm looking this up on my phone. I'm on eBay on my phone at the time. I will say this, that $50 copy was it, it was worth the same like they both sold for the same price and I, I didn't really understand that so I was like yeah, yeah yeah you know I wanted that either way um I was always curious about that not for resale because even though now they're harder to find online and yes people they want a lot more money for them of course um it wasn't until just recently I was live streaming and uh Radical Reggie of all people jumps in the live stream and I asked about this and he said that that if you pre-ordered the game that's the copy you got and that makes sense because it actually has a manual if it was just like a a promotional copy for reviewers or whatever i don't think it would have a manual and um all the artwork and everything or artwork on the disc so that makes sense to me so i mean the guy i feel like he knows what he's talking about with you know obscure uh releases like shadow Heart. so that's the story there you know if you guys know better than that you know let me know in the comments but that's the the story that I that I heard about the promotional copy, the not for resale copy of uh, Shadow Hearts. Okay, next two games. We're getting to some some money games right here. Okay, at number two, uh, this was a game I pieced together. I bought one disc and then another disc in the case, and it wasn't really hard to piece together. I did it in about a month's time. It was a few years ago, but. The third Xenosaga game, Xenosaga Episode 3. Now, I will say this. This is not a series that I have completed, nor have I played this game right here. It's on my list of to-dos, but just being 100% honest with you guys. But Oh, and I do want to say this. That last game, I, I might have just got gone on a tangent. It didn't even go over the price of the last game, but uh, Shadow Hearts, um, $190. Bucks. I think I mentioned that. I don't, they're not for resale. You know, I've seen people try to tack on an additional 100 but... You know, just get the cheapest one you can find. That's a game I'd buy disc only, but... Okay, so Xenosaga 3, haven't played it. Uh, I did play through about half of the first game. Uh, for whatever reason, the story didn't grip me. But I do know that this is uh, this is made by the same people that did uh, this game right here. This is like my favorite DS game, the Super Robot Ties and OG Saga Endless Frontier Monolith Soft. They did... Uh, you know, there's other Xeno games. Not all of them. I don't think they did Xeno and Gears. I think that's what Square, Square Soft, Square Enix, wherever they went by at the time. But if this is the game you want and you're looking for that third game in the series, this one's going to cost you 200 So, yeah, 200 bucks for a complete copy of Xeno Saga 3. There's that holographic cover one that I don't have. I do know someone that owns it. Um, and that one's going to cost you, obviously, a couple hundred more. But last game that we have... Dot Hack Quarantine. Dot Hack, the original Dot Hack series. This is the fourth game in that series. This is another series I started to play but haven't completed it. I have completed the GU series, but just not the original series. This game right now, 400 bucks. 400 bucks for Dot Hack Quarantine. That's okay. So Dot Hack Quarantine was for the longest time known as a hundred dollar video game. As a matter of fact, when I got these games originally, I paid over a hundred for all four of them complete. And that was a lot of money. 
Um, and it was always known, well, I want to say for maybe a couple of years that Dot Hat Quarantine was a $100 game and you just had to pony up if you really wanted to play that game or get a modded PS2. But now with collecting and COVID, 400 bucks for a complete a complete copy of Dot Hat Quarantine, that is a... Uh, absolutely crazy and i think this is actually a game that i have the strategy guide for i think when i bought these the guy had all his original strategy guides and gave me those as well i can't i'm looking at my my strategy guides up on the shelf right now and i don't see it but i know i have it somewhere but yeah that's it guys you know all these games right here have gone up in price and i got uh some other stuff on the shelf up there i can go through as well but if they're anything like any of these, it ain't going to be looking good. Anyways, guys, all I got to say is go through your PS2 games. If you're looking to sell, probably right now is the time. So anyways, guys, till next time. Peace.